Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you and praise you for your word. I thank you that you come in right now. You have your way that you think through my mind and speak through my mouth, that those things that would be considered mysteries you make clear so that people's lives can be changed, people's hearts can change, people's actions can change to line themselves up with your will, your word, your purpose, so that they can demonstrate your love, not their own agenda, not their own mindset, that they speak the truth in love, that everything that they do is ministry from the head of the church to the heads of every auxiliary all the way down to the girl, the children in the pews. I thank you that this word will penetrate and cause a change that will make the spirit of God extend beyond these walls. Lord, you said your word, the light on the inside of us is what draws men to you, to us, for us to draw them to you. And we thank you right now that that spirit is present here today. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. What's the name of this church? Disciples of Love. Disciples of Love Church. Am I right? So let me ask you a question. What's a disciple? One is disciplined in the word, one that follows Jesus, yeah. According to the Bible, if you look at the Greek definition, kind of breaks it down simple. It says a learner, a pupil. That's what a disciple is. A disciple is a learner and a pupil. What's the name of this church? Disciples of love. Okay, so what is love? God is love. Anything else? Genuine love? True love? Phileo, agape, all of those? Unpredictable? Actually, love is predictable, believe it or not. You know what? What I found is when I studied love, there's a lot of words that are supposed to mean love and you know church people will fight you about what love is you know I asked one person what love is agape I said that ain't love what you mean that ain't love phileo I said that ain't love what you mean that ain't love that's what the bible says I said that's not what the bible says that's not what the bible says they use those words as a representation of action that demonstrates what love is. So if those words are just a demonstration of what love is, then what is the true nature of love? Undefinable. You know why it's undefinable? Because we couldn't begin to find the words to express what love is the same way as we could not find the words to express what God is. How many names in the Bible represent God? A lot of them. But you know what? If I asked you what God's name is, what would you say? I am is his name. I am is his name. Not all the descriptive words that we use to describe him when we're pl praying, like Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Tzitzikanu. All of those words are only descriptions of the character of God. They are not his name. There's only one time in the Bible where God ever said his name. And he said, tell him, I am sent you. 
So if God is love, and you can't find a word to describe or assign to God as his name, it's the same with love. You cannot find a word to describe the totality of what love is. You can only find words to describe an aspect of it. None of them are complete within itself. So this is what I came up with. I said, love is the essence of God's motivation towards us. It is the manifested, it, it is manifested in his actions and his intentions towards us. I'll say it again. Love is the essence of God's motivation towards us. It is manifested in his actions and intentions toward us. What's the name of this church? Disciples of love. So here's the, here's the curious question. If you're not a pupil, someone who is willing to learn and showing the same motivation towards people that God shows towards us, then you are not a disciple of love. You're not a disciple of love. And see, it manifests itself in different ways. It manifests itself in attitudes. It manifests itself in how you relate and talk to people. And, and the shame of it is in the church, we don't realize what we do and the impact that it has on other people because we're doing it for our motivation, not God's motivation. And here's the challenge. You have angels in the house. And if we would operate with the same heart that they operated in, then this church would be busting out of the doors. But what happens is, and God revealed this to me, what happens is oftentimes is that not them, it's somebody beneath them in a position of authority who is not having a good day one day, talks to somebody kind of sideways and runs them out the door. And it's because we don't have the heart of God to show love towards people. We get so caught up in our motivation to help them do what it is that God called them to do that we get full of ourselves. God said we shouldn't think more highly of ourselves than what we are. I may not get ahead of myself. So what is the church? What's the church? Church is the body of Christ. What else? Is the body. And any other definition? It's definitely not this building, right? Not the building. What's the name of this church? It's actually Disciples of Love Church. That's the official name of this church. Disciples of Love Church. And it was funny. God revealed to me why, you know, it's important that you put the church on the end. Because disciples of love is just a description of what you should be. The church is who you are. So what is a church? We are the church. Jesus is the head. We are the body. Now, if you work with me a little bit, I'm going to try to get to some scriptures to support what God has shown me. First scripture that I want to go to is 1 Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6. And I'm going to start with verse 15. Say amen when you have it. And the scripture says, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Let me 
by five points. When I read the scripture, you don't have to stand up. I'm, I'm, I'm not on a full now. I just want you to get, get the, the nature of it. So I have a body, right? Right? I have a head, arms, legs, feet, hands, fingers, ears, all of that part of the body, right? If I took my arm off and I joined it to pastor, then guess what? I don't have the use of my arm on my own. Now, the use of the arm has to be a joint agreement of communication as to how it's going to be used. Why? Because it's not joined to me by myself. Now it's joined to me and him. I know that's kind of a far-fetched analogy, but just think about it for a minute. If, if our arms were joined together and I wanted to go left, he would have to go left or right. I, we c I couldn't do it by myself. We joined together, right? Motion is counter-dependent on the other person. So let's look at this for a minute. When you join yourself to anything, DOL, you are now joined with the body of DOL, which means that your motion, communication, representation, is not that of your own anymore. It's a reflection of the entire body. That means your attitude, your good day, your bad day doesn't only affect you, it affects everybody else in the house because you are not on your own. You're not on your own. God talks about one body. The, the reason why the body of Christ is so splintered with all these denominations is because nobody knows how to come together. Every denomination has its own way of doing things, and I'm not saying anything wrong about any denomination, but denomination within itself is not in the Bible. So because denomination is not in the Bible, guess what? We can't be joined to someone. Why? Because they're Baptist and we're non-denominational, or we're Church of God in Christ, or we're Pentecostal, or whatever. That title separates us. And so what good is something that separates us when God says we're supposed to be one body? 